The members of the Defense Council, General. Chair the main. Monsieur, take your places. Narbonne, is he not with you? Monsieur Narbonne was killed last night. His emplacement was blown up. Nor do I see Monsieur Cahors. He too was injured, Monsieur. On his way here. What are his chances? None, Monsieur. His leg was severed by the blast. We have suffered many losses today. Too many. Monsieur, today is St. Louis Day. And before proceeding with our meeting, I would propose that we spare a thought for our sovereign. Long live St. Louis and our king! Long, Long live, live the king. king! I declare the council in session. Let us estimate our strength. Christ! At your orders. How many of your mercenaries can you muster, then? Less than a hundred. Amongst your wounded, how many will survive? The way things are at present, not one. We are without medicine. And you, Flan, how many of your volunteers can I count on, eh? Twenty, at the most. At the most? I'm being optimistic. You, Benway, how many regulars? At maximum, a hundred, including cooks and menials. The best I can do. have a force of 150 muskets. Plus our cannon, for which we have 100 rounds left. Sufficient to repulse a fresh assault by the Spaniards. I wish I could share your optimism, Monsieur Toiras. We are all that remains of what was once a force of 600 men. That is a fact. We stand facing an army of more than 6,000 men who pound us night and day with all the strength at their command. Another fact. To expect under such conditions that men should be pushed to make sacrifices that are outside the limit of their resistance may appear to be folly. Yet another fact. But we have orders from the king which demand the defense of Casal at no matter what cost. And we shall defend Casal. At no matter what cost. Monsieur Toiras, have I leave to express my opinion? You may, Flan. We are soldiers in the service of the king. That we should die at our post is an accepted condition. But the question is... Go on, what is it? Supposing we do resist the coming Spanish onslaught, I foresee the moment when our ammunition runs out, together with our meager ration. Then we shall not even have strength to die in combat. It hasn't happened yet. But it will! What are you waiting for? Why do you refuse to look facts in the face? My mercenaries have not touched their pay for months. How could they, since we're encircled here 200 leagues from France? They're ready to revolt. You will suppress it. This morning we apprehended deserters going over to the enemy. Execute them. It shall be done. 
Prove we are still in command here. It may not convince them. My men cannot accept why we dedicate ourselves to a task that is hopeless. You can tell them we're expecting to be relieved by the army of the Marshal, Duc de la Force, which is now assembling on the Var frontier. Uh, when they get here, we shan't be needing them. That's enough! Monsieur Toiras, you granted me permission to speak. I was ready to listen to your opinion, Fla, not your dishonor. Monsieur, no man is permitted to speak to me like that. I speak as I find, regardless of permission. Is that understood? Fla, in the name of the king whom I here represent, I charge you to be silent. Really, gentlemen, where are my valiant companions from La Rochelle? We've been in tight corners before on the Ile de Ré in the defense of Fort Saint-Jean. And there, we were encircled by the army of Buckingham. A hundred to one against us. Yet we triumphed in the end, and Buckingham discouraged ship for home, and we took La Rochelle. We all know this is a different situation. At La Rochelle, we had the entire French force behind us. It was the enemy who was hungry, but now we are besieged. The issue that is being decided here is not what happens to us. It is the fate of our empire. Let me explain it. Here is Casal, our present position. Surrounding us, the Spanish forces led by de Castella. And between the Spanish forces and France, the Duchy of Savoie, which is neutral, where the Comte de Sospel, representing the Duke, is prepared to give free passage to the Spanish so they can attack our Duc de la Force and our armies massed on the Var. The reason, gentlemen, for our resistance is that the Comte de Sospel will not make contact with the Spaniards while we are in Casal. A crafty politician, he wants to make sure who will be victor before he finds himself allied to the vanquished. To tie down the Spanish troops for as long as possible in the assault on Casal is our objective, our reason for holding out here in a do-or-die resistance. So, now you know the reason for the decision to hold on to Casal to the last minute. You argue, you question, you talk of food, of medicines. Really, monsieur, if I were not convinced that your attitude was due to strain and a passing depression, I would be ashamed of you. In dedicating the services of my mercenaries to France, we swore to obey orders without hesitation under any conditions. We shall honor our bargain, monsieur. Thank you, Christ. My volunteers and myself await your orders, monsieur. Dispose of us in any way you like. Thank you. And never, sir, have the gentlemen of France abandoned their comrades in arms. Monsieur Toiras, I have the honor to obey you. Well, we are all agreed, finally. Let us proceed with all the necessary preparations. As from tomorrow, not one shot to be fired. No reconnaissance and no patrols, save on my orders. We must guard our reserves for the coming assault. Any infringement of my orders shall be punished by death. I would suggest that to help boost the morale of your men, you tell them we've worded the Duc de la Force and his men are on their way to relieve us. I don't think they'll believe it. They're well aware that all messengers crossing the Spanish lines have been captured and killed. Well, it's worth trying. Men will believe what they want to believe at such times. We are all agreed then as to what we're going to do. We all stand together, pledged to defend Casal, until our inevitable destruction. I decided to send without delay my last message to the Duc de la Force by the last of our carrier pigeons. I've explained to him that we hope to hold out for another month, but once they attack, well, there'll be nothing he can do for us. Guard! Send this message at once, with all possible haste. It's the first time that a carrier pigeon has borne not just a message, but an invitation to a funeral. I do not agree with you. I believe it carries, above all, a solemn oath. Our oath, to be kept by God's grace. Now, my thanks, monsieur. This council is at an end. You are dismissed.
I've carried it out zealously and efficiently. All that concerns Spain concerns us also. I don't doubt it, Monsieur Ambassador, and I appreciate it. The events in which we are participating are divided into two fields. The military, which is you, my dear Castellar. The other concerning the diplomatic secret service is mine. Your military, forgive me for saying so, it appears, is being held in check. Only temporarily, Don Alonso. In my capacity representing the Duke d'Olivares, Prime Minister of the King of Spain, I wish to report how we've obtained diplomatically, through the intervention of the Duke de Savoie's ambassador, the authorization of free passage of our troops to the VAR, without a single shot being fired. You should find it a pleasant change, my dear Castellan. On condition you give your word, my dear Don Alonso that the French troops at present occupying Casal be prevented at all costs from carrying out reprisals on any of my lands. You have my assurance. I have recalled the cannons from Mantua in support of our coming attack. I'm assured they will be here within a week. The French will be annihilated. God grant you are right. Time's precious. Richelieu, knowing that he cannot now save Casal with the military, is diplomatically maneuvering to assist for us, and the French frontier remains shut in our faces. Tell us what is this move of Richelieu? The plan was evolved in the Vatican, in utmost secrecy. The French have been successful in persuading His Holiness to negotiate a truce between France and Spain. Are you sure of it? Yes. The rendezvous has been fixed in my country. We are neutral. In the castle of the Comte de Sospel. And with, as Spain's representative, Don Alonso, here present. The Abbe Mazarin, the delegate of the Holy Father, and the Duke de la Force, representing the French. And when does this take place? At any moment. We know the Pope's man is en route, and the Comte de Spell has set out to meet the delegate. But do not be alarmed, Senor. I shall do all in my power to prevent the French representative from signing this treaty until after Casal has fallen. But... You have nothing to fear from the French, Senor Ambassador. The best way of proving that statement, my dear Alonso, is to capture Casal. Meanwhile, though dedicated to the cause of Spain, I am responsible for a neutral country with a French frontier. The Duke is obliged to instruct his representative, the Comte de Sospel, that he meticulously observe the proposals fixed by His Holiness for a peaceful solution to the Franco-Spanish conflict. What is it, Senor? Don't understand. Could Savoy have changed his mind? What do you know of this, Senor? I demand an explanation. Chevalier Ritchie. I had the honor of serving under you at La Rochelle, monsieur. Chevalier Ritchie, I remember you very well, monsieur. I heard a cannonball had blown off your head. It almost did, monsieur. It took me six months to recover. I'm glad you did, monsieur. 
I regretted to think you were no longer with us. I'm not so easy to kill, monsieur. I shan't need you, Flan. Here you go. Now you can give me your message at once. What message? The one you bring me on behalf of the Duc de la Force. You confound me, monsieur. I do not bring any message. I have not seen the Duc de la Force. I came over the Alps. What do you mean? That bored with my inactivity and conscious of the impact your exploits have made upon Europe, I came to offer you my support, if you will do me the honor to accept it. And just to tell me this, monsieur, you've come all this distance, and what's more, thrown the Spaniards into a panic, and more important, caused me to waste my precious ammunition. I'd rather have arrived quietly, but the Spanish thought otherwise. As for your powder, you needn't worry. I saw where the Spanish reserves are. I can get it whenever you like. This is no time for contests or mock heroics, monsieur. Here, we aim to stay alive as long as possible with a minimum of panache. Conditions here are such that anyone guilty of insubordination can expect no mercy from me. Is that clear? Perfectly clear. You will be shown to your quarters, those of Marban. He died yesterday. As you wish, sir. You will be under the orders of Captain Kleist. Captain Kleist is a mercenary, monsieur. Then I must tell you I prefer some mercenaries you seem to underrate, who do battle for money, to some gentlemen who do battle for glory. Your despised mercenaries do things without unnecessary risks. They're efficient. Your sort who risk your lives and those of others so easily are amateurs, not soldiers, and must be ruled with a rod of iron. Flan! Will you conduct Chevalier Ricci to Narbonne's quarters? He is replacing him. At your orders, monsieur. You will from now on take your orders from Captain Kleist. I want them cleaned up, Guillaume. I'll do my best, monsieur, but it's just a ruin. Go out tomorrow and get what you need. Where? Cassard! Poor Francois. Where do you think you are? The town's the same as this, a mass of ruins. Huh? Where are the people living? In caves, in ruins, under the stars, in the same way we are. If you came looking for adventure, you're mistaken. And what time do we eat? What? What time do we eat? <laughs> oh, what's so amusing? I'm sorry, forgive me. Your question was so unexpected, it came as a shock. Natural, I suppose. You've just arrived, and to you it's a simple question. <laughs> but to us who've lived here for two months, such a question is a joke. Glad my jokes are appreciated. Open your eyes. This is reality. Look around you, mon ami. Haven't you yet grasped the desperate straits we're in? You're without food? Food, water. Supplies the lot. For two months, we've been on half rations. From tomorrow, it's a quarter. After that, if we're still alive. Knowing Tuarez, he'll probably order that we turn cannibal before giving in. And you ask me, when do we eat? When do we eat? I only wish I knew. Does that answer you? Mon ami. Come down to Earth. To try and accept conditions as they are is important. This is no mere adventure. It's a desperate task. And if you're hungry, suck your thumb, Francois. Same way you did when you were a small boy. It's a good remedy, you'll find. I speak from experience. I apologize, Francois, for the lack of hospitality. <sighs> as bad as that. It couldn't be worse. This is ridiculous. They've plenty of everything over there. Why don't you take an expedition and get you'd some? You'd better ask Tuarez. So you'd prefer all your men to perish for lack of supplies? Sooner than risk a couple of necks? It's a scandal, and I'll not participate! Francois. I'll just tell you this. Don't do anything rash. Tuarez is in command here. Disobey his orders, and it'll cost you your head. I must do my rounds. My advice is to get some sleep. You must be very tired. I bid you good night. Till tomorrow, Henri. Ah, monsieur, I'm at a loss to understand why you stranded us in a place like this. I'm not afraid of battle. I go where you go, but famine, monsieur, is something else, and my stomach's hanging out. Don't worry, Guillaume. You'll eat tomorrow as much as you want. How? We haven't got wings to spit it as silently over the heads of the Spaniards? You weren't contemplating repeating that business like we did today. <laughs> go to bed. 
I want to meditate. Fighting for, they're well worth fighting for. 